If you've struggled to create a convincing interior in Blender like I have, you've come to the right place. Bringing your interior renders to something believable can be a tough task, but today it's simple. For this tutorial, I'll be sharing my broad process of making this interior, so everything you learn here can be applied to any interior you make, not just one like this. Let's dive in. To start, the first thing you want to do is find a reference image. I used the website Behance because there I could find interiors with multiple shots of one room, which made the modeling process much easier. Before doing anything in Blender, I recommend using the free software AppSpy, which allows you to find and apply the correct camera settings for your scene based on your photo. Because of this, I switched from creating an interior from scratch to being able to kind of trace a photo of an existing interior. This removed the struggle of creating a believable layout, finding materials that went together, and a lot more. A link to a great tutorial for FSpy is in the description. After you're done with FSpy back in Blender, the first thing to do is delete everything by hitting the A key to select everything, and X to delete. Next, after downloading the add-on, instructions are on the website, go up here to import and select .fspy. I'll find my fspy file, and now you can see after I selected it that we have a camera with the right focal length and a background image. But it's rotated wrong, so I'll go up here to item, and I'll change the X rotation to 90, and all the others to 0. Now I'll begin making the room. To do this, I just added a cube and scaled it until it matched the fspy image. Next, block out the main elements from the picture, such as cabinets and counters. Sometimes objects I made would look right from the camera while they were actually outside of my room entirely, but all I had to do to fix this was move my object so it aligned with something I could clearly see in the picture. For example, all of the cabinets sit against a wall. This corrected perspective errors and ensured the objects were in the right place. One more thing I did here was add a cube and fit it where my window was. I made sure it went through the walls because later I would add a boolean modifier which uses one object to cut through another. After you've blocked everything out, begin to add more detail, matching your objects to those in the, your reference photo. For my scene, I mostly added drawers since my reference isn't very complex. I also added bevel modifiers, rounding out the edges of all my objects, and in real life, nothing has perfectly pointed edges, so adding bevels to my objects added another layer of realism in the modeling phase. One important thing to do here is to select your object, hit Ctrl A, and select Scale, which lets the bevel effect affect each edge in the same way. You might notice that I left something like the stove as a cube, and this is because I decided to find a model better than one I could make online. Next, select your room and add two modifiers, a bevel and a solidify. Next, go down here to these eight dots and drag solidify above bevel, and now change your solidify thickness to something you like. I'll just do negative 0.1, and you want to keep it negative because that thickens it from the outside and keeps the inside looking nice. Then I'll also go down here and adjust my amount under bevel to something I like maybe like 0.02 somewhere around there. And then again hit Control A and select scale because that will help the bevel bevel correctly. And our room is thick and it is also rounded. Gaps in your walls like windows, select the cube we created earlier, hit M and select new collection and I'll make a new collection called booleans. I'll hit OK. And now I'll go to your room, add another modifier, this one boolean. I'm going to drag it to the middle. And I'm going to go here where it says operand type and change object to collection. And for the collection drop down, I'm going to put that as booleans. And now I'm going to go up here, hit this little collections icon in your hierarchy. I'm going to hit the eye as well as the camera, which disables it both in the viewport and the render. And now your room should have a little window. Now that our windows are done, we need to add an EXR file to our scene, which is great for photorealism and lighting. Go to the World Properties panel over here, hit the yellow dot next to Color, and select Environment Texture. If you don't yet have any EXR files, go to polyhaven.com and go to HDRIs and download a background you like. Back in Blender, I'm going to open mine, and then change your strength to 1000. Next, I noticed that my camera is actually outside of my room, so what I'm going to do to fix that is go into edit mode. I'll hide the modifier so you can see. And I'll bring this face so it covers the camera. Next, I'll show the modifier again. And I'll also adjust some render properties. So I'm going to go up here to render engine. I'll change EV to cycles. Then I'll change device from CPU to GPU compute. Then I'll go down to the very bottom under color management and change view transform from filmic to filmic log. Then I'll go into camera view. Hit the render preview button up at the top. I'll also select my camera in the hierarchy, go under the camera settings, and turn off my background images. 
and I'll go back to my render settings and bring down my exposure until I can see good lighting and not too bright, not too dark. Now it's time for materials. I get all of mine from Quixel Megascans, but a good alternative is something like Polyhaven. For this scene, I'll be using mostly PBR materials, so make sure to download things like Roughness, Normal, and Specular Maps. For my first material, I'll be using the cabinets. And before creating yours, go up here to Edit, Preferences, go to Add-ons, and Enable Node Wrangler. I already have it enabled, so I don't need to do that. But now I'll go to the Shading tab, hit New after selecting your cabinets. I'll just call this material something like Cabinets, because it's Cabinets. And then I'll select only the principal BSDF. Open this menu, go down to Node Wrangler, and hit Add Principled Setup. And I'll select my materials, and it does it all for you. But our UVs are unwrapped, unwrapped wrong, so to fix that, I'm just going to go into Edit Mode. Hit 3 for faces, hit A to select all of them. Go up here to UV, hit Cube Rejection, and now it should be unwrapped correctly. Repeat the process for the other objects in your scene. Here I also made some minor changes to some objects like the counter. If you downloaded AO maps, make sure to set a mix. Here I also made some minor changes to some objects like the counter. If you downloaded any AO maps or ambient occlusion maps, make sure to create a mix node, change float to color, set mix to multiply, change the factor to 0.7, and put AO on the bottom. For the room, I had two materials, a stony marble and stucco walls. To add multiple materials to your object, go to the materials panel on the left, and hit the plus button twice, this plus button, not this one. And now what you've done here is created two material slots, and each slot we can put a material in. So I'll do that for one of them, and that for the second. Then I'll rename them, this one will be floor. And I'll name this one to walls. And I'll go ahead and do what you did earlier, select the principal BSDF, hit add principled setup. I'm doing the floor, so I'll find my floor textures. And once you've done that, go up here and select walls and do the same thing. But now you'll notice that the floor material is on both of them, on the walls and the floor. So now I just go into edit mode, select your wall faces, which I can do by selecting the floor and then hitting control I. Then hit walls over here and then hit assign. And now you should have a floor and some walls. Now all your interior needs is objects to fill it like plants or glasses. Instead of doing all the work yourself, just go online and get some 3D models that shoot in your interior. For my scene, I only used free assets and they worked great. Some things I modeled myself, such as the plant vases and the window frame, but that's only because they didn't cost me any extra time. Because you're modeling from a reference photo, try to find models that are either identical or similar to the objects in the photo, because you don't want to ruin your interior with the wrong assets. When you're looking for assets online, make sure that they have the right file formats for Blender. By default, every format in the import menu is supported by Blender. Now that you've finished creating your interior, rendering is all there is left to do. Before rendering my scene, I gave everything some finishing touches, like trying new HDRIs, moving objects around, or even using different materials. Be cautious in this phase, because you don't want to overdo your scene. For me, it took a few different full renders to get a pleasing result. Remember that you can adjust the gamma and exposure values after you render by going to the render tab up here and going down to color management again and adjusting it. Once you're done, just hit image, save as, and that is it. I hope this tutorial was helpful for your interior scenes and that you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe for more content like this and thank you for watching.